Hello, my fellow gnomes, and welcome back to this tutorial series. We're finally getting back underway. And you notice down here, I've got my lineup of the team, the gnome rovers. And they're looking pretty fine, I've got to say, with the uh, white kits and the uh, cool headgear, all looking pretty unique. Now, it's a bit of a problem because you noticed I've just copied them over for my main model, and each of them is called gnome code at the moment. Now they may look a bit like gnome code, but they're not gnome code, they're all different gnomes we can clearly see. Now I'd like to give them all some names. And so how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna loop through them. So you know I've got a list or a folder, sorry, over here inside the workspace called gnome rovers and this contains all the models. Now how we've looked at loops so far, we looked at something called a while loop. Well, today I want to look at something new called a for loop. And so let's go ahead and add in a script. And if you remember a while loop looked a bit like this, while true, you give it condition, uh, do, and then you have your loop. And it will keep running while this is true. Now, this is good if you don't know how long you want the loop to run. Um, but if you do have a condition, say you just wanted it to run five times, well, you'd have to add in quite a lot of um, logic. You'd have to have a variable at the top, something like uh, number equals one. And then you'd say, well, number is less than 10. Do print number. And then you'd have to say number equals number plus one. So then it'd run nine times we get one two three four five six seven eight nine there we go in the output and that's okay it does work but it's a bit annoying having to write down all these variables it'd be nicer if there was a cleaner way we could do it we could just say do the loop nine times well there actually is a way for that so i'm gonna delete all of this and let's introduce the for loop so you type for and what you do is you declare your variables all on one line. So you normally use i, so we'll say i equals one, comma, 10, space, do, and then you'll see when we press new line, we have that end appear, which completes this code block. And then inside the code block, I'm just gonna type print and print out the value of i. Okay, so let's just look at what's going on here first. So we've got i, that's the name of a variable. So we're creating this variable now on the first line of this code block, this for loop. And then we've got a comma, and then the next value is how long we want this number to grow up to. Because the for loop, what it does is it adds one each time to the value of i. So it's like iterates through. And we're saying stop when we reach 10. And so now if I press run, what we'll get down the output is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you can see it's a bit of a neater way of doing it, what we had before with that while loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and loop through now all of these players and we're going to give them a, a random name, I think. So if we want to have some random names, we're going to need to store them somewhere so we can choose some names from somewhere. So... So far, we've looked at variables to store information. So we could do something like random name one equals, I don't know, Nomeo. Okay, and then we'd have a second one, which would be random name two equals Homeo, and so on. We could keep repeating this, can we? We could have a three and a four and so on. Uh, now, that's not really the best way to do it. Again, we're gonna have one, two, and it's a bit of a pain. It'd be nicer if we could have a list of information. Now, thankfully, Lua actually allows us to do this. So we can have something that's called a table. So I'm gonna create a table called uh, random names, just like creating a variable. And then we say equals, but then this time, instead of just giving it a value, like a number or a string or text, this time we're gonna wrap it in curly brackets, okay? So you see these, these are curly brackets, not like your standard um, 
circular brackets like this and not your square brackets. These ones are curly brackets, okay, parentheses. And inside there, we can add a value, okay? So now we're gonna type Nomeo. Use, make sure to use those quotes, remember. And then we can add a comma, just like we used in our for loop, actually. And then after the comma, we can add a second value, okay? So this one can be Homeo, right? And then the third value, added that comma again, remember? And this will be Jomeo. Then we can have Homeo and why not Lomeo, okay? So now we've kind of got a super variable, if you like, because it contains not just one value, but one, two, three, four, five different values. So if a variable is a bit like a bucket that you can put something in, then this, which is a table, well, it's like a table that you put lots of different buckets on. So why are we talking about all of this? Now, for loops are really useful for going through tables. Now, if we want to access the information that's stored within this table, well, things get a little bit more complicated now because we can't just do print out random names. In fact, if I try to do that, uh, let's see what happens. So I'll run the game now. And oh, I've still got my loop going. But if we go up to the very top, you'll see it's just giving me a dot, 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 which is a bit weird. There's a little arrow. And if I click there, it's actually going to give me the full list now, if you can see that. And it says one equals Nomeo, two equals Pomeo. So you can see each item in the list has a a number attached to it, which is its key. And then this is the value. So if we want to fetch a specific item within this table, we have to say which item we want from it. So we give it its key. It's kind of like a, an index essentially, okay? So the index would be one for Nomeo. So if we print out, and let's just get rid of this for loop for now, if we print out, random names and the first value first value we'll get nomeo so run that and we're going to get nomeo and if we went say for the fourth value then we get comeo <laughs> cool and i've noticed they keep getting clobbered by the giant football each time so how can we use this to our advantage well Let's loop through our football team again. Now, the cool thing about having them inside a folder like this is we can actually use a function for that, okay? So we need to create a new variable or a table actually in this case, and we're gonna say gnome rovers, and that's gonna be equal to workspace dot gnome rovers and notice it auto completes and because it's got a space in it um, it actually needs to be wrapped inside quotes and brackets like that because otherwise it would not make any sense you can't have a space like that so it's actually when you have a space it's got to be wrapped in quotes and square brackets and so anyway now we've gathered that folder we can use a function on that and the function is going to be get children okay and then with a opening and closing bracket on the end and what this is going to do is it's going to look in this gnome rovers folder and it's going to get the children so that's everything that's inside of it so all of these models it's going to grab all of them and it's going to store them in a table a little bit like this one so now below if i said print gnome rovers and i run the game we'll notice this time i get those three dots and if i click i'm going to see one equals gnome code two equals gnome code three equals gnome code it's telling me the name of everything contained in that gnome rovers folder so now let's combine these two bits of code we've got together so we're going to create a new loop now so for 
i equals one comma space and then how many items are in this table there is five so we use the number five is where we want to finish at do new line and then now we can actually select from them so we can say gnome rovers and then remember if you want to fetch the item from that table you need to use the square brackets so we give it the index now instead of saying one like we did before we will use our variable which is going to be changing so we can say i and let's just do a print first of all so we can print that out now print out gnome rovers i so what do you think that's going to do well let's run it and find out shall we so we run the game and now you can see oh we've got gnome code gnome code gnome code gnome code every time again that might be a little bit confusing let's change that actually to random names i instead that'll be a better example we'll run that then and then we're going to get every single name printed out because if you remember this i vowel is changing each time it goes through the loop so now we're going to combine these two things together so i want to take gnome rovers and whatever the current iteration of that table is and then I want to take their name and I'm going to make that equal to random names and the corresponding value in that table. So now when we run the game and there we go, so we can see in the explore window, the name of each player has actually updated, although it hasn't updated the name above their head, if you notice. Uh, I think that's because Roblox has a property of the humanoid, if I remember correctly. Humanoid.display name. So I want to change that as well. So we see here, this one, Nomeo, it says for his humanoid, his display name is name code. So we need to change that to Nomeo also. So then it'll display above his head. Let's do that in our script. So after here, we want to say, Gnome Rovers I dot humanoid dot display name and we'll set that equal to whatever the value is inside random names as well. So now they should appear above the head. Let's see. And there we go. We've got Comeo, Jomeo, Homeo, Nomeo, and Lomeo. Great stuff. Now, tables and for loops are pretty in-depth topic. There's a lot we can talk about with them, but I hopefully that's got you started with why they're useful and why we might want to use them a bit more as we get into this series. But thank you very much for watching and thank you for following along the mighty gnome movers. I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.